Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to explore this Christmas wreath throw. But before you turn me off and say I'm not in the mood for Christmas, this tutorial project is really interesting because you can use the same concepts to put names, to put other photos, to put your own shapes and ideas within an afghan. Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to be able to do this kind of concept and this, this is something that I was really scared to do. I have to say this is the last tutorial of the Christmas series. I put it off to the last because I was really terrified of it and it turns out it's the simplest of them all. So let's uh, begin. Let me tell you a little bit more about this in just a moment. So the whole gist of this particular afghan is that you're looking at it from a graph perspective. So just think of this graph paper, you got the horizontal and the vertical lines. You can use the same concept to put in your, no, your own names. Maybe you like the game of Tetris. Maybe you've seen Mario Brothers where people have done afghans like this and they put their own shapes but it looks very pixelated. This is the perfect project for that. So there are two types of granny squares being used within this project. You have the solid colors and so you'll see solid white, greens, reds in within this project and then you'll have two tones and the two tones are what is giving the angles for when things are shifting around. So for example we have a solid green here but then we notice around it we have two tones of, of green and white on both sides which give it the angular effect. So basically even on the outside it appears to be a ribbon that's chasing around the outside. You have a solid two tone, two tone, solid and basically it's allowing you to have like a pixelated version of a photograph but using granny squares to do it. So you just have to think about it like you could draw your own shape on a, gra on a graph paper and just kind of fill it in with the colors and then use every crossing point um, for your graph in order to to make the color that you need for that particular square. So for example you'd have your white and then the next one you'd have your two tone and then maybe if you wanted to do one that's up here you might want to do white to go on an angle and then of course the two tone to keep it going up on an angle. It's a very very easy concept to be able to master. Um, there's a lot of work that's involved in making these kind but a lot of people like to spend that extra time to be able to do very personalized uh, pictures, names and anything like that with an afghans. So I'm going to go over, before I let you go, I'm going to go over some of the techniques on attaching these particular squares at the end. Before I take you to the studio and show you how to do the granny squares because the granny squares are not typical than what you're used to so you have to put some faith into that. Now when you go to attach these at the end is that you're going to leave a long tail and use that tail to sew it to the neighbor but basically you want to do all of your particular squares at one time and then start laying it out and putting it together all at one time. And if you're anxious you can always put it together as you go as well. What you're going to be noticing is that we're going to be turning this square when we go to make it we're going to be doing one side and then we're going to turn it around and come back the other way. On the final edge what you're going to do and when you really look at this here is that you will notice that you're going to be sewing so that the right side is facing up. So the very last um, side that you've just done, the very last round is going to be the right side and, uh, and you're going to be looking at it. What you're going to do is that you're going to be using only one loop instead of two to be able to attach it to the neighbor. If you really look down on this you can actually see what it appears to be little mini squares and basically they're only using one loop to put everything together and it makes it sit nice and flat. So I'll take some photos and I'll show you more about that later and until then let's take you down to the tutorial and I'll show you how to do the both solid and the two tone granny squares. So here's a closer up version of the same afghan and you can see this is a solid color uh, granny square and this one is a two tone and you can see that that is happening out throughout this particular idea in order to form the pattern. So it's just a very easy concept that you just have to think about your colors and how they go together in order to form the shapes and in order to really follow things along. So without further ado I'm going to grab my five and a half size I millimeter crochet hook, some super saver yarn and uh, I am using the same size hook believe it or not and I'm using the same yarn and you can tell that my, ten my tension is a little more loose. I'm a little more loosey goosey. So my afghan if I did it from complete start to finish would be much bigger because my tension is that much bigger. So without further ado let's get started right now. So let's begin the solid color. I'm just going to use green for tutorial reasons. It's easier to see that on my white background. If I use white then it would be very difficult. So let's start off with the slip knot and insert our hook. Remember there's always slower tutorials available on more uh, basic instructions when it comes to crochet available on the crochetcrowd.com as well as redheart.com. We're going to chain four. Remember that the slip knot never counts as one. So one, two, 
three and four and we want to form a ring. So we're gonna slip the hook into the beginning chain and pull the yarn through and through to form the ring. And so now let's begin the next part. When we go to look at this square you'll notice that there's only actually two rounds. We're gonna be doing the first round and then the second. That's how as big as these things get. So let's uh, begin. We're going to do a chaining up of three. So one, two, and three and let's come back into the center of the of the beginning and go for two double crochets into there and this will equivalent be equivalent to one side of your square. Notice that I'm using the straggler as if it's a part of the circle so it can trap in a position. So this chaining of three plus two counts as three double crochets in the rules of crochet. Now we're going to chain two, one and two and let's come back to the center again and we're going to put three double crochets in this time. And again see how I'm trapping that straggler in a position by just putting it on top of the ring so it's going underneath the stitches. So let's chain two and coming back into the center of the ring again. So like so and we're doing three double crochets again if you haven't picked up on the pattern and chaining a two, one and two and then for the final side we're going to put three double crochets but the way that we're going to finish the square in just a moment is that it's not typical from what we're used to because we're going to A finish it off differently but also turn it around after we're done. So in technically in, in uh, what we would have done is chain two and then fastened it to the top here but what we're going to do in this one is that we're going to wrap, we're going to do a half double crochet. So we're going to wrap first and then insert into the top of the chain three, pull through and then pull through all three. And what that did is that it equals the same amount of gapping spaces that you have in all four corners. So let's uh, begin the next part of this tutorial. See you in just a moment. So this is where I've left you and now we're simply just going to turn the square around so that we're looking at the wrong side. So you can see that this is the right side. Now we're going to turn it around. Now we're simply just going to chain up three. One, two and three and we're going to double crochet again into the space two more times. And so that chaining of three equals um, three double crochets by the end by the time you're done. Now we need to come across so we're just going to chain one and then come into the next corner and we're going to do three double crochets into that next corner. Then once you get the three double crochets chain two and that allows you to turn the corner and put three more double crochets into the same gapping space. Like that. Then chain one because we want to come across and then come to the next corner and we want to do the same thing. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet all within the same gapping space and that allows you to turn the corner. So there's your three, chain two and then three more double crochets back in. Like so and then chain one, come and do the next corner. So three double crochets, chain two, three double crochet. Okay, so there was three, chain two and three double crochets back into that same corner. Now we're coming all the way around so we have to then chain one and this time we've already done portion of the corner when we started so this time you're only going to put three double crochet in first like so and then chain two and then slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three and that completes off your, your item. So you'll fasten this off and you'll leave enough yarn on here so that you can actually go all the way around to be able to do your stitch work. When you're going to fasten these together with the neighbor you'll be fastening it so this side is facing up. You will see that these particular stitches are kind of folded up toward the top. You're only going to use the back loops when you go to attach to the neighbor and then you'll have the beautiful stitch work as you've seen in the original. So fasten this off and when we come back we're going to start the two tone square next. So now we're going to do the two tone square and we're going to be using two colors at one time as we do it and it's almost the same on either side. It's just a very clean way to be able to do a two tone. So the very first uh, decision you need to make is that you need to make sure that the darker color is the color that you start with. So in this case it would be red and so I'm going to use green and pink as my next one and so I think the pink in my opinion is darker so I'm going to use the pink to start with when I go to do this. So always use the darker color first. 
So let's begin. I'm using the darker color and I'm gonna form my slip knot again. So I, I'm using Super Saver once again and simply remember the slip knot never counts as one and we simply need to chain four. So one, two, three and four and what we want to do is we want to form a ring so we're gonna slip the hook into the beginning chain, pull through the yarn like so and now you have your first round ring and like before the straggler just pretend it's part of the ring as we move up. So we're gonna start the next part and this is where it gets a little more complicated but it's still very doable. So now we're going to begin and we're just gonna chain three. So one, two and three and that remember in the rules of double crochet that is a double crochet and we want to double crochet two more times into that ring. Okay so we need to turn the corner. So in order to do that we chain two and then put three more double crochet in here. But listen, the last double crochet we're gonna do slightly different. We have to begin the changing of colors once we do that one. Okay so I have two in there and I have to do a third. Okay but I don't wanna finish the third. I wanna leave it like so and I wanna grab the next yarn and for security peace of mind I'm going to create a little mini sl slip knot doesn't say to do this but I would do it if it were me and I want to slip that onto the hook and I want to finish that double crochet with the new yarn and that makes that green yarn available. You do not want to fasten off this pink one at this time. You want to leave it on and the straggler we can bury it in. So move that straggler out of the way. Sorry move this yarn that we still need out of the way. Put the straggler down on top of this section here and it will get trapped in a position. So to begin this new color is that we chain two right away. So one and two and then we double crochet three more times into that same corner. So you can see that the color is going to be on one side and the green is basically extending over with that chaining of two as you look at the corner. So that's uh, chain two. Okay and what we want to do is come back down into the center of the ring again and put three more double crochets in. So I have one in there and now I have two. Okay and so I now have two in here and all I want to do is my third and this time what we want to do just like the, the regular ones we are going to do a half double crochet over. So we're just going to wrap first and then go into the top of the beginning chain three and do a half double crochet from there and that will extend it around. So now we're ready for the next portion of this tutorial. So we're currently using the second color which is the green because we started off with the darker color and we're simply just going to turn our work. And now we're going to chain up five. So one, two, three, four and five. Now you need to slip stitch to the third one up so you gotta count one, two and three. So when I count five I did it automatically. I just didn't say anything to you. But I would want one, two, three. I'd pinch it and then four, five and then I knew where to put that that um, slip stitch. So just slip stitch through to create this little nubbly thing and what we want to do is that we want to come and work the remainder of this round. So we want to begin and we want to put two double crochets into the same gapping space. Okay so we're not doing the whole thing as we go because the other side of this um, corner will be the actual pink. We want to chain one and then come to the other side over here the first corner and we want to put three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So you know how to do this already. It's just a matter of doing it and then one and two. Okay so we're getting three double crochets now in as we turn the corner. Okay and then chain one. So this next corner that we're about to run into is going to have a mid color change. So we're at the first three double crochets are going to be green. But the final double crochet that you're going to do which is right now is that we're going to finish it off with the with the other color. So we're going to bring this pink up. We're actually physically done with this green at this time that is done and we simply want to finish that stitch with this yarn here. So, so we're just going to move it up. Okay and now we're going to chain two. So one and two and then coming back down into the same corner is that we put in two more double crochets. What I'd recommend is see this yarn here, the green and the straggler and this other piece here. Trap that into position so it's underneath so you can safely trim that afterward and you're gonna put three double crochets in all together. Like that. Chain one, 
Okay, and we wanna get to this corner over here. Let this green one go because it'll be obvious that it'll be on top. So let it go because you can safely trim that. And then put in three double crochet. Okay, chain two. You're turning a corner. And then three double crochet again. Just like so. Okay, and chain one. And what you need to do then is on the final corner here, we want to put in three double crochet with the same pink. And once you have your three in here, see this nubbly thing? You're just going to go inside of that and just slip stitch it together. So it brings it everything together just like so. And so then you're gonna fasten this off. Now this pink, you just wanna make sure you leave it extra long so that you can safely trim or use that as a darning needle um, thread to be able to put your squares together. You just have to fasten off and just, because you are gonna be doing, um, attaching them together, you just you just can fasten them off. You don't have to be too um, specific about it. But make sure that you do use the back loops. So the back loops are here and those are the loops that you're going to be using when attaching it to its neighbor so that it looks perfect each and every time. So you can safely go back now and just uh, trim off all this extra yarn that's hanging out and this is your starting yarns plus your changing of yarns in order to have your two-toned granny squares in order to make a pattern like this work. And I would want this to be much longer but for tutorial reasons I'm just cutting it early short like this and so this will just require just a bit of adjusting and it will adjust once it's in the afghan and this can make it a really cool and fun idea. So this is Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd until next time we'll see you.